I'm Allie with PotomacBeads.com, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the Raquettes necklace. The Raquettes necklace is actually going to be a version of right angle weave that we're doing with some drops that are hanging down with the daggers and some rizzos. If you need any of the materials, you can purchase from us online at PotomacBeads.com and PotomacBeads.eu, as well as we'll put links below the video that you can check those out to shop online with us. This is a fun one that goes along with the idea that you can actually use different two hold shapes to make a same and similar looking design. To begin the Rockettes necklace, I want you to get a seed bead that is not part of the project and put it on five feet of beading thread. At the very bottom, we're going to leave about 10 inches of thread left because we're going to put our clasp, our toggle clasp on at the very end. That way, if I need to make it longer, I can make it longer from either side rather than just kind of working from one direction. To put the stop bead on, you're going to go through a bead that's not part of the project, and I'm just using another 11-0 two times, leaving that 10 inches at the end. That thread is going to be exposed on the outside of the bead, but it's going to come off the bead, so or off the project, so you don't need to worry about it. From here, we're going to go into that same kind of spiral design like the similar Laguna necklace that was the inspiration behind this Raquettes necklace by Anna. So to begin, we are going to be picking up our two-hold bead. I picked a two-hold diamond. In hers, Anna has a two-hold lentil. It's just gonna change the look of the design a tiny bit as mine has a point and hers is more rounded. After I pick up the two-hold triangle, pick up three 11-0 seed beads. I'm gonna let those drop down next to that stop bead. Reversing the needle then, go back through that two-hold diamond the opposite direction and that'll put those three seed beads just decorating right along the side. From there, we're gonna spin back one more time, adding three more of our 11s, and going back through the original first hole of the diamond. And this kind of goes along with that alternative beads better beater that I did the other, uh, the other week where you have the option to use different beads along the design. So for this one, any two hole bead will work. You can kind of change the design. You might need to add a seed bead here or there, but any will work. Go back up through then those last, or those first three seed beads rather, sewing through, and then through the diamond as well. So you're kind of spinning around to get that decoration and that design. That's going to be continued the whole length of the necklace. And now coming out the design, I'm going to add on to the design by adding on my side beads along here. In my top, I'm going to sew through the 11 0 seed bead that's already there on the opposite side. I'm going to add two of my daggers. And then from, or I'm sorry, two of my rizzos rather. From there, I'm going to add one seed bead, one of my diamonds, one seed bead, two of my daggers. Actually, I'll start out with two of my rizzos. We'll get two rizzos going on first. And then coming back to the other side, we're going to go through that first 11 0 and make a loop going through then the 11, the diamond, and the 11. That's going to put the rizzos on both the top and the bottom of the design so they have kind of them sticking out. From there, sew through the rizzos, through the 11 0 seed bead, through the diamond right there, through that first hole of the diamond, and through the 11 0. Coming out the 11-0 there, we need to add two more seed beads to help us decorate along the side of the diamond and go up through. And just like we added two, we're gonna add two on the opposite side. Add two on, go through the 11-0 that's already there on the opposite side, and then back through like we did previously, the diamond as well as the three seed beads that sit along the side 
back through the two-hole diamond and out through the 11-0. We're going to be doing the same progression and the same kind of linking the whole rest of the project and I'll go over now how to add on the daggers and add those along the bottom. Coming out the 11-0, we're going to repeat the same at the top here where we add our two Rizzos, have our two little kind of legs there and our raquette, raquette necklace. And we're going to add two of our daggers, or Rizzos, I keep saying that, sorry, two of our Rizzos, our one 11 seed bead, our one of our diamonds, one 11 seed bead, and this time we are going to add two of our daggers. And because the daggers sit right next to one another, that's what gets them to have that um, kind of leg effect, I should say. So Anna's design is actually a bracelet that it has the two going up and down. I'm going to concentrate and just put one going down at the bottom. That way you can see the variance. And I'm going back through after I add those through the 11, the two hole diamond, and the 11 out the top. I now have established a top and bottom series for this. So the daggers are always going to go on my design towards the bottom. On Anna's design, she alternated which goes to the top and which goes to the bottom. For here then, we're going to go back through the Rizzos. Back through the 11 seed bead. Back through the diamond and the 11 seed bead coming out next to your dagger. Give a little tight pull. We're going to add two more 11s. Sew through the other side of the diamond. Add two more 11s again. Sew through the 11 that's there and the other hole of the diamond. Back through then the three seed beads that sit decorating along the top. After you come through those three seed beads, you're also going to come through the diamond and then go through the 11 OC bead. Time to progress again. Every other time I grab and do this drop on the necklace, I'm going to be grabbing Rizzo's two times, the top and the bottom, and then the next one I'll grab the daggers at the top and the bottom. So it's gonna alternate that I now have my Rizzo's on the top and the bottom. So as I go in here, I'll add my two Rizzo's my 11 my diamond, my 11 and my two Rizzos. To circle that out then, again, I'm going back through the 11 and back through the diamond duo and back through the 11 on the other side. Getting that nice circle. Going through the Rizzos. After you're sewing through the Rizzos, you're going to go through the 11, diamond 11, and then we're going to add two more 11s on each side to decorate along the side of that two hole diamond. Go back down through the 11, and then back through those three beads. Now as I get into my starting position, I'm going to go through the diamond. And then again, come out that top 11 -0, ready to start again. And as I start again, now I'm getting ready to add my next dagger. So I'm going to have my two Rizzos, 11, diamond, 11. And now my two of my drops. And these drops that I'm using, they're kind of a fun drop. They're a matte vitriol full. And they get those nice diamonds, that dotted diamond. From here then, I'm going to go back through that 11, diamond 11, and out the top. You can see that fun effect that is happening along the necklace. So I'm going to continue then the whole length of the necklace, going in and adding my two Rizzos, and then switching to a Rizzo and dagger. If you do want to do a bracelet, you can also do an opposite, like Anna did on her design, where you have the two daggers and then the Rizzos, and you're just picking up opposite and switching which one is on the top and the bottom. 
Once you place your final set of Rizzo's on, and remember we started with a Rizzo set, so I'm ending with a Rizzo set. Also, if you want to, while you're creating the necklace, you can actually start to downgrade and have the Rizzo's do a couple rotations where it's just the Rizzo beads. Here at the end, I'm coming out of the last diamond, and I'm going to be adding three of my 11-0 seed beads. Grab my wire guard, go up the wire guard. If you have a button clasp, you would add that now too. And I'm using the copper toggle, so I'm gonna put my toggle on to my wire guard, go through the loop of the toggle, toggle, excuse me, and then also down the wire guard on the other side. While you're doing this, kind of pinch along the wire guard, making sure that the thread stays in the middle U-channel of that wire guard. On the other side here, add three more 11s, and then sew back into the 11 that is before the two-hole diamond, and the 11 after the two-hole diamond. Make sure again that that toggle sits inside of that wire guard. And that's just gonna make a little triangle there. We're gonna reinforce that whole thing, going back up through those three seed beads, up through the wire guard, through the toggle clasp, through the wire guard on the other side, and then down through the 11 OC beads. Once you have that nice tight pull on your thread, Go back down through that 11 two-hole two diamond 11, and then go back a couple places in the project here. And I'm sewing backwards along the project, adding extra thread, but also basically getting to a point where I can knot off the thread, that it's not right at the end. After you take your thread back a couple passes, Grab on one of the bridge threads that connects the thread or connects beads together. Make a loop sewing underneath the bridge thread and sew through that loop once, through that loop twice, and that's going to make a nice knot there. So back through the project a couple more times, through a couple more beads, and then repeat that same process. After I have a couple of these knots, I'm gonna take my thread burner or my thread zap and burn down the extra thread. And that finishes off then your raquettes necklace. So you've got those ties in there. Take your thread zap or your thread burner, burn down the thread and then right towards the end of the thread zap or the thread burner, you're gonna go into that little tail and just burn it down. And there you have one side completed. So remember on the start side here, and I made my necklace right about 17 inches. On the start side here, you have your stop bead. That stop bead is gonna come off. Add a needle to the end of that 10 inches of thread. So I'll take it off the thread that I have here. And when you add it to the thread, if you're not doing this already, you wanna grab your needle nose pliers and kind of flatten out that thread. That's gonna make it much easier once it's flat like that, much, much easier to go through and actually put it onto your needle. So it becomes much easier to put it onto the needle that's there. Once you get it on that needle then, we're repeating the same process, going up through the seed beads that's there adding three seed beads, wire guard, my toggle bar, three more seed beads, and back through and reinforce. Take it back then about an inch and burn off the extra thread. Once you're finished burning off your threads, you have your raquette necklace finished. And I did use um, almost a full tube of my Rizzo's in that uh, jade matted color. And I used 22 
um, of my dagger grouping. So 44 daggers all together. They come in a bag of 50. So I have plenty left over that I can make it a little bit longer or I can actually make a pair of earrings to go with or even step over and kind of have fun making a bracelet maybe with one dagger at a time. In addition to that jet matted and those vitriol matted dots, um, I did use those two whole diamonds in the copper color. So they are in that nice um, metallic bronze copper and in addition to that then I have my 11 OC beads. The 11 OC beads that I ended up using were the silver lined emerald AB and those are the Miyuki brand of C beads. Then put it all together with a toggle clasp and that was a copper toggle, a 20 millimeter Bali style toggle with two wire guards. If you don't have the wire guards you could use thread through but I prefer to use the wire guards especially when connecting to metal. In addition to that, 0 .006 white wildfire thread is what I used throughout the whole project. Again, if you need any of these materials, we're happy to ship them to you from PotomacBeads.com. You can also check out the beginning of the video where we listed everything out as well, or below the video where the date stamp is and says it was published by. There's a little button that says Show More. If you click on that Show More button, it'll give you links to all of these different products online. As always, if you like the video or you have any questions, have any ideas, or have anything that you'd like to say, you can give a little thumbs up and comment on this video. I'm happy to look back at those and kind of answer along the way. In addition to that, you can always subscribe to this YouTube channel to get regular updates on new products, certainly things like those two whole diamonds, as well as different video tutorials that we do for you. In addition to that, stay connected with us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, as well as join our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. It's a wonderful collection of individuals that love to design and make jewelry and are super helpful and inspirational if you want to go further in your jewelry making skills. It's a wonderful community that we have had the honor and privilege of kind of building up and we'd love to continue to see that grow. As always, with all of the designs, I encourage you to try it out and kind of test out different things. Like Anna had used the two hold lentils. You could also use a brick or a bar or a lot of those different two hold rectangular beads that I touched on on one of our must knows those uh, kind of be better beater episodes. So check some of those out. You can train up the design as well. As always, thank you for watching and have fun creating your own Rockettes necklace.